Gretel and Hansel. So Gretel and Hansel is a telling of the story of Hansel and Gretel. You know the story, a couple kids find this cabin in the woods and there's this old lady who lives there and turns out she cooks kids and eats them. I mean, that's the grim fairy tale anyway. This does have a bit of a different twist on it. Not just the title, but judging by the title, Gretel is the star of the movie. The difference, I don't think this is a spoiler and I don't really, I don't have the motivation to watch the trailer. I don't remember seeing this in the trailer, so like light spoilers that it's not really spoiling anything. The main difference in this one is the witch is like, oh, I see something in this girl. Maybe she can be my apprentice. So anyhow, that's the main difference. They're trying to figure it out. And this old woman's like, here's some plentiful food, young children who are really hungry. Anyhow, right. So there are things that I liked in the movie. First of all, the rock star of the movie, Alice Krieg. Because ever since I saw Alice Krieg in Star Trek First Contact as the Borg Queen, I was like, yeah, she's a rock star in my book. Maybe because I'm a Trekkie, sure. But I thought she was really good in here. She has some great lines, whether it be self-serving manipulation or just a line where you're like, I like that. I don't know, there's some philosophy there, what can I say? All in all, I thought she completely stole the show. And those are my favorite moments is when they're in the house and Gretel's, I, Hansel I felt like was kind of a prop. So it's really Gretel's story and there's a silent tension that's going on there and I liked it. The movie has some entertaining yet interesting tone. What I mean by tone is that it's not always the same tone. I mean, you can argue the movie's supposed to feel like it has two different tones because one is the lie, you know, the world with the veil pulled over it, the lie that the witch is creating that they're kind of dealing with. And when they start seeing past it, then you have the real world, which is much darker. But no, that exists. And then there's the other tone, which you feel like you just kind of slipped into the movie Mandy. It goes from the witch to Mandy, but not in a way that always feels like it mixes and works, but rather in a way where someone saw the witch and Mandy and said, well, if I make him go splat, Maybe. I mean, a couple of kids hanging out in the cabin, eating at the table with a witch and she has a lot of food and it feels exactly how you think. And ooh, creepy woods and there's a silhouette and it's talking like, you know what calls you to the darkness. The veil is lifting. And then at one point in the movie, there's this red light coming from behind a tree, a silhouette, and you got the synthesized music like, <laughs> that is from a completely different movie. Really, that tone only happens a couple times. Maybe that's why it feels out of place. I mean, it's interesting. I thought it was cool. It just didn't feel like it's from this movie. Maybe they were saving on budget. Maybe they were like, we want hellfire and a demon. Oh, we don't have the budget for that. Okay, well, we'll put a red light behind a tree. You got the synthesized music ready? Great, work for that movie with Nick Cage. Let's, let's just do it. Admittedly, maybe the reason I'm griping about it right now is because I actually did like that tone when it came on. I wish they committed to using it more. And there were a couple times, speaking of budget, that the budget did, didn't work. There was this one scene where if they spent more money on the visual effects, scene would have been sweet. But instead I saw the scene and I was like, I get what you were trying to do. Really sweet concept. And a couple times in this movie, you feel like that conversation went down where they're like, all right, well, it's, it deals with witches in the woods. So we're just gonna have creepy imagery cause creepy imagery. But you don't really know why it happens. At a point you're convinced there are about 10 witches in these woods. There aren't, it's just the one. It actually kind of feels like it was directed by three people. Cause when this movie started out, it felt like a student film from 2005. Filmed in 2005 on a Canon XL2 and I hope we get a good grade for this. And they get to the cabin and it's like, oh, the budget's up now. There's a scene where she's walking in the woods and you're like, Canon XL2 from 2005. So between that, the cabin and the, the Mandy. <laughs> Three different people. Also, I wasn't a fan of the voiceover in this movie. This movie has voiceover. Sometimes you hear what she's thinking about any given situation. I really feel like the voiceover in this movie was just an afterthought. Anything that was said with the voiceover, I feel like could have just been illustrated through actions or I'm imagining the movie without any voiceover with nothing changed and that completely works as well. I personally just didn't see the need for a voiceover. It just felt out of place. In the end, I'm kind of 50-50 on this movie. There were some things I liked. Most of it was in the cabin. Some visuals I liked. Some of it didn't really mix. <laughs> I felt like they were from two different movies. In a weird way, I feel like they left this open for some cinematic universe or something. The grim fairy tales cinematic universe. I can totally see that happening after this. I don't know, I'm gonna dip. It's not the best movie I saw this January. It's not the worst. It, Gretel and Hansel, it, it simply happens. I'd say it'd probably be a better time if you're drunk. Yeah, no, it's a And I want to thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Audible. Audible is an audiobook service that I use via the app on my phone. Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan makes those drives to the screening a little less painful. So I guess that's my official audiobook recommendation. Pale Blue Dot by Carl Sagan. It's always a good time for astronomy and science. Besides Carl Sagan reading his own audiobook, Sound of the Gods. So click the link below to go to audible.com slash johns or text johns to 500, 500 and get yourself one free audiobook and two Audible originals for you to listen to for, that's right, free. Along with your 30 day free trial. You want more, huh?
Insatiable thirst. I like your style. Turns out Audible is issuing a challenge for new and current members. Finish three audiobooks by March 3rd and get yourself $20 in Amazon credit. Just remember, finish three by three three. So again, click the link below to audible.com slash johns or text johns to 500 500 and get your audiobook on. And once again, thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it. All right, so Gretel and Hansel, have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what's a fairy tale that you'd like to see like a nice dark take on? I mean, they're all kind of dark and messed up. So hey, go wild. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.